What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Just Like Brothers podcast. Here I am, Kai Jones. My name is like a, a BB. Kai Jones the son. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, of course, I'm Kai Jones, owner of WJG Sports. This is like a BB, the world renowned freelance journalist slash Twitter personality slash IG poster what? slash photo man slash <laughs> videographer. Slash, All right, slash, enough gas, slash, guys. Slash. <laughs> enough gas, enough gas. Um, this is the Larry Bird episode, 33 episodes in the whole 33-33. This is, I think, I'm glad we came up with a, that, I mean, 33 is easy to come up with a number for an enemy. Yeah. Great. We, did, we did a terrible job with 31. We forgot Reggie Miller. I mean, yeah. ugh, we looked really bad on that. But hey, when Jason Terry did wear 31, so yeah. I mean. Hey, Jay. <laughs> The jet. Um, but nonetheless, uh, we are here back for you uh, as Kai's phone immediately goes off on of the first part of the episode. You gotta love it. Um, um, live, t- live, live, kind of, <laughs> t- live TV technically. Some what live? live iPhone, uh, iPhone live. I don't yeah. Know. I anyway, don't know. anyway. Um, playoff but, season, playoff season, yeah. playoff season, playoff season. It's been wild. Um, currently, not ten teams left in the JLB podcast area, which means between the two of us, yeah, your so teams we, are. Of course, we have Princeton boys. They will be going to North Edgecombe on Saturday to play at seven o'clock. Eastern Wayne boys. They will be going to Southern Durham to play at seven o'clock. Goldsboro boys. They will be going to South Granville to play at seven o'clock. And last but not least, Clayton Comets will host Eastern Guilford at 7 o'clock. So, yeah. One, the four places, two us's. Don't know if that's going to get covered this. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, for me. Uh, for you, yeah. I have the Conley girls. They won. Uh, they'll be playing Southern Durham at home Saturday. 3 p.m., I believe. Right. Uh, both Farnville Central teams Take care of business, so they're in there. Uh, both Kingston teams still in there. Uh, they play Saturday as well. And the North of North girls, they are the they, last. Yeah, we we kind of forgot this morning, but they yeah. they put it on for tea. But we'll get to that in a second. We want to start with the Princeton boys because you were there, and it was a yeah, crazy it, story there. Yeah, I mean it was pretty insane. You know, Princeton down sixteen with about twelve minutes left. Um, Already down, Jaheim Taylor, who's been out for about a, about several weeks. I think a month or two yeah. now. I think I think he went out in January. Yeah. Um, so he's been out for about a month or two. Then uh, Tyrese Whitley missed the game, missed the second straight, third straight game that he's missed because of the flu. He will be back for Saturday's action, of course. i will be big. Um, man. Yeah, and then. From there, crazy refereeing, very inconsistent. Uh, I would grade that performance by the the, the boys in the, in the stripes as a poor performance. Um, really, both teams deserve better when you consider it as a second round playoff game. Um, the officiating was never was so inconsistent. Kids, the, the the players are trying to figure out exactly how to play because of it and because of it I think you saw sometimes where they made some poor decisions speaking of um, I mean the the uh, the foul outs yeah yeah I, to me I look at it as um, for Princeton this was a good test for them when you think about them and what they were able to do they uh, they, they really uh, in, in, the first, in the first half, really, what thing, the thing that got them was Warren County was making everything that they shot, pretty much. Um, but, I mean, they were getting Teams good looks. Teams tend to do that in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, but they were getting good looks. So, you know, that that's the type of thing that happens. While Princeton couldn't get really anything to fall for them, it was all at the basket. They didn't make it, I believe, for the game. They shot 35 36% from the field. Um, yeah, uh, Nation, of course, dealt with some foul trouble early, dealt with foul trouble late as he, of course, fouled out. But talking a little bit more, getting into the second half, um, really, Princeton looked dead in the water. Um, they made a little bit of a run there. They had, I think they uh, cut it, cut into it by about six? 13. It was 13? about 13. Um, and it just looked like they were, like I said, dead in the water. 
Aiden Taylor misses an easy uh, floater in the lane um, and comes back down on the next trip. Boom. He puts his hand out there, gets the steal, goes down, makes it. Then Warren County, they make a turnover on the inbound by stepping on the line. Ah. Turns the ball over. They look mad because they're like, we were trying to just exchange the ball. When the ref's not hearing it, they hand the ball to Princeton. Princeton passes it to Zion McFerrin in the corner. Zion McFerrin knocks down his one of two shots that he made in the game. Um, three points. Uh, they go back down. They kind of hold for the last shot because that, that all happened in the last minute. Um, they miss it. Nation Waller gets the rebound. He pushes it up the floor. Side steps to avoid the fifth foul on the charge, lays it up, and buzzer sounds. They're up, they're down by six. I mean, you can see so the, what was a 13 point game was cut to six in the blink of an eye. Yeah, about a minute basically. I mean, um, Nation picked up his, four, his fourth foul with about five minutes left in the game. I mean, five minutes left in the third quarter. Wow. Um, and Warren so County. How many fouls were called? My goodness, what? I believe, I believe foul count was something like 50 to 60. Fouls? 50, yeah, total? Yeah, total between the two teams. Jeez, man. Yeah. Yeah, um, both those teams deserve better, man. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Are you kidding so, me? 50 fouls in one game? Yeah, so Princeton got down by 16. He sent the nation back in. They cut it down to about 13. Then that run happens. Um, then to go into the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter uh, Princeton continues that rally. They tied it up at 50. Um, then Warren County and Princeton kind of trade baskets back and forth there for a little bit. And then, crucially, Princeton down by one. Uh, Nation get, tips a pass. He goes for the loose ball. He gets his hand on the ball. The other guy collides with him. Foul on Nation. He's out in the game. So they go to the free throw line, knock down two, put him up by three. Um, and it seemed like everyone was everyone on the court was a little nervous about like what was going to happen. And then the next thing that happened was Aiden Taylor he makes a step back three with a hand in his face, looked like he blocked it, got it just over it. Wow, freshman, Sixth, yeah, freshman, yeah, freshman Aiden Taylor, uh, freshman with the onions. <laughs> Warren County, I believe their best player, Andrew Smith, came back, knocked down a two-pointer. Um, but then the next time around, Jacob McCain gets a three, knocks it down, and now they're up by one. Um, so well, things less happen. Less than two minutes left? Yeah, yeah, less than two minutes left. I believe Princeton gets like two or three more two-pointers and maybe a free throw or two. Yeah, two, they made two more air shots, and then there was a free throw they made to put them up six before uh, Warren County. Then Warren County had an inbounding mistake. They once again stepped on the line after the free throw. Was this time, was this one more legit than the first? Both were, both of them were legit. Oh, I mean, yeah. it was just that they were mad because like we were trying to exchange the ball, but like there's a certain way that you have to exchange the ball. Like you can't step on the line and then just hand it to somebody and then. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, so then they step on the line. Princeton gets another two free throws, or I think it was one. They made one, um, put them up six. Um, then uh, they call a timeout for Warren County. Warren, Warren County, no, no, Princeton calls timeout for Warren. So then Warren County comes back, tries to roll the inbound in. Christian, um, gosh, I can't remember. He's a freshman, just got pulled up from JV because they had two JV players on the floor. So they were out there. Down five uh, two freshmen, two J, the, the, the JV, one of the JV players was a freshman, right? Yeah. Aiden's, Aiden's a freshman, freshman, and he's already a varsity. Yeah. Uh, Jacob McCain, who's your sixth man, and then uh, Hunter Bailey. Big fellow. Yeah, who's your, who comes off the bench as well. So you're out there with, even that, even though you were down two starters, now you're out there with. What is it, five you, second unit players and yeah. two JV yeah. players. And yeah. you ended up winning a playoff game. Yeah. Him. So Christian, of course, instead of just letting them roll the ball, he goes as fast as he can, dives on the floor, get steals That's, the ball. Wow. Jump ball is Prince Prince jump possession. ball, and that game was over. basically it. I mean Warren County. I mean shout out them for fighting. I mean they start this year, I believe one and no three and ten. Rallied to make the playoffs and then got to the second round. Um, they play as hard as they can play. Um, Upset, I believe, Kate Hatteras. 
Um, yes, that's correct. Had a valiant effort on the road. Probably should have won that game. You know, the coach was upset about it, but you know he knew this type of thing could happen. I mean, because he could see that they were kind of laxing off. Because really, another thing that was hurting Princeton was they couldn't. They were getting stops, but they couldn't get off. They couldn't get the defensive rebound. Um, they can't do that against North Central. No, I mean, they, they can't do that. No, they know that even with Tyrese coming back, they have to be perfect in this game, and that's yes. pretty much the how the skinny on it. But nonetheless, that's the story about Princeton boys. Obviously, the girls did lose. Right, uh, right. To the girls them. lost to uh, Chatham Central. They uh, the girls ran a hats off to Chatham Central. They ran a great flex offense. Ran it to precision. Shot the ball extremely well. Princeton didn't shoot the ball extremely well that night. And, of course, when you have moments where the team comes on the road and, and can make enough shots and you can't actually hit, hit shots. That's the kind of thing that happens in the playoffs. You've said this many times. Yeah. It, I mean, and this time it, it just happened to the principal. Yeah. I, I, and, I mean, sometimes I think the problem when it comes to, uh, to the playoffs and going on the road and being able to do something like that. It's just all about being prepared. Not to say that Princeton wasn't prepared. Um, just sometimes that you can be a little bit more focused as an underdog because the world is against you, you think. It's a lot easier to generate that type of energy. And I think they might have bought into that a little bit that they were an underdog. Um, but hats yeah. off to Princeton, 20, about the 20 win season for them. Obviously, um, losing uh, to Kira Cummins last year. Yeah, and you um, had come back, you won conference title. Yeah, I mean, and to Kira Cummins, I mean, she was no slouch. She scored 20 points in the game for them last year, was her leading scorer. Then Meredith Wooten came in and, of course, uh, continued to, to get better. The Walking team got better. She's, she's um, now, of course, you lose Haley Woodall and you lose Rihanna Braswell, who are big pieces to what they do. I mean, but you'll still be returning Meredith Wooten and Leon Nelson. Yeah. And they are, um, and, and, and when I look at those two on their own, they are spectacular student athletes as far as um, on the field stuff. I mean, uh, both of them are great volleyball players. Both of them are great basketball, uh, well, you know, good basketball players and then great yeah. softball players. Yeah, I can't, and, can't and wait to see them on the diamond. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, now, softball. They we're not going to talk too much about softball. but Not um, today, at least, but we're going to get to it at some point yeah. in the next few weeks because the regular season starts next week for spring right, sports. Right. So, I mean, Princeton softball, I hear, is they different out there. Too, yeah, so. yeah. I, I, I hear John, Johnson County softball is just different. Yeah, I think Princeton should win the uh, state title this year. Ooh, oh, okay. At least go to it, I at least go to it. That's but we'll, we'll we'll save that for next yeah, time. But um, so Princeton North Edgecombe, what do you expect from that? I uh, expect North Edgecombe to come out and play a fast-paced game. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, Princeton can play that way, but I think they're more used to playing low-scoring games because kind of Carolina won a conference ball. You play really low-scoring games and you find a way to grind it out most nights. Right. Uh, but Princeton has mo more speed than anybody in that conference, and I'm not, in my opinion. Yeah, they do. Um, they do. But can I, they match their speed? I think so, but I just think I don't North think, Edgecombe's I don't, firepower is... I don't think they, they can match the speed of North Edgecombe. That's, yeah. Not without Jaheen, at least. Um, Tyrese coming back after Tyrese three, will come back. three games, and he's been on I mean, but it's been two weeks since that he's ran. It's been two weeks. He's lost 10 pounds because of the flu. Um, so you don't know exactly what you're going to get from Tyrese. He could come back and have one of his better games and surprise people, or he could come back and be winded and gassed at that type of pace. For me, if I'm Princeton, I slow this game down. To a South Johnston pace. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. No, yeah. that's, I mean, I mean yeah. that in a very good way. Of course, South Johnston lost to Eastern Guilford. Um, what I say about Caden Dawkins last episode? Yeah, Caden Dawkins. This man had forty. Yeah, he had forty. I mean, South Johnston. Shout out, Caden. South Johnston had held everyone they played to twenty five. I believe. I believe. Like no, there. no player had scored more than twenty five. Yeah, the I mean, season. heck, they've held five teams to to forty or less. So, I mean, he, he that, had 40 himself. That, that was a spectacular effort. But, yeah, if I'm Princeton, I play at South Johnson's pace. We're going to slow it down. We're going to execute. Um, that is the We're going to win this game 6-3 to three if we have to. <laughs> yeah, that is that their, best that's their best chance to win, in my opinion, just because 
Um, North Edge come the type of strong. athletes that North Edgecombe can yeah. throw at you. The number one now, team. Now, one thing is, North Edgecombe does, isn't as organized as, say, a Princeton is and doesn't have sets like Princeton does. So if Princeton can execute on offense, make a lot of good shots, take that 35 and shoot about 56-ish percent, then I think they'll have a shot to win. But This is going to have to be an entire team effort, all hands on deck, yeah. for whoever Coach Cobb throws out there. Uh, he trusts all those guys, right. especially after what happened and, this past game. And, uh, yeah, and he's gonna I, throw. He's gonna go down. If I had, if, if I'm gonna make a score prediction here, um, which you're not gonna have to, but if I'm gonna make one, I'm gonna say 84-66. This will be the first time since David Cobb has taken over. And, well, this will be the first time in two years that they were taking a loss bigger than ten points, but. I just I don't think that doesn't mean the game's not going to be competitive. The game yeah. can still be competitive and end up yeah. like that. Yeah, I, you know, I think I think really the biggest thing is just to start. If Princeton can just early on slow it down, like I said, keep the turnovers down, uh, score and execute out of their offense, be able to get back and stop that North Edgecombe transition, you have a better chance um, because, like I said, North Edgecombe's athletes are just. Top notch. I, I'm with that. Um, so, of course, shout out to Princeton. That's incredible grit and toughness to do that. Those boys did a really good job. Uh, as for my game, I was at Southern Durham versus J.H. Rose, uh, 3A East playoffs, and uh, I was expecting a good game. I didn't get a good game because Southern Durham came to play. I wasn't they came to play. Um, I wasn't expecting that. I, I didn't I expected I actually kind of expected the Spartans to win, but I didn't expect it to be that big. Man, goodness. Ricky Council and them boys is different, man. Yes, they are. I'm um, I'm and wasn't just, everybody is different, but Ricky Council is a different level of athletic. You know, you know, I told every person I talked to at Rose said this is the best team they'll play all year. They're on the money by far. This is the best team they played all season. Uh, I think they beat them down, and they yeah they got to a running clock in the third quarter. Um, yeah. Now, of course, uh, the interesting thing about that is now Southern Durham is going to play Eastern Wayne. And of course, Why Eastern is that, Kai? Uh, because they beat New Hanover last night. That's time. right. The Eastern Wayne seed, Warriors. 15 seed beating the two seed. Um, in, in Wilmington. In Wilmington. Um, it's I, one of the I would just like beautiful say, gyms you could go to. I would, just like, to go I, I would just like to say that in, in our group chat, I called that. Yes. I said Eastern Wayne by four. They won, won by eleven. They won by you, eleven. You still called East Wayne winning. Yeah, um, uh, I think really East Wayne has been the benefit of good matchups. They've gotten teams that I believe may have been a little overseeded. We look at West Brunswick. I think they got overseeded just because of their conference. Um, they are the, they're the Mid East three and four is a good conference. Right, it, it is. But at the same time, though, I don't think they that they were ready to see the type of physicality that Eastern Wayne plays with. That that is true. That's the thing. I I actually am with you on that because I don't believe they don't they don't see a lot of teams that want to be the fast pace. I, I, you know? I think that's what New Hanover had too because I think. Normally, when I think about Wilmington basketball, no disrespect to Wilmington basketball, it's a lot more fast-paced and it's a lot more shooting than it is. Versus here in Wayne County and here in the 3A, 3A 4A, ECCC, it's a lot more a lot grit, and yeah. and grit toughness. And I think in the playoffs, that is a very tough matchup to have someone come into your, to your house, especially when you consider the type of limp that went at Eastern Wayne has. And honestly, going back to Southern Durham and Rose, it was kind of the same thing there a little bit. Yeah. Southern Durham plays with a lot of toughness, and they actually play the exact, just about the right. same way as Rose. Right. High transition game, get to the basket, use your use the ferocious athleticism, because that's what it is. It wasn't just Ricky Council. Yeah. Uh, Amon uh, Hamilton yeah. led the way with 25. Uh, TJ Richardson is someone uh, Bruton told me about, Anthony Bruton, fucking real. He told me about uh, TJ, and TJ had a good game, too. He had 11. They they had a lot of guys contribute. It was a total team effort. And, uh, yeah, we just got a shout-out. So, shout-out to Coach Molly, year one as the coach of Southern Durham because, yeah. you know, David Noel left for the Capital City Go-Go. Right. And he helped, he helped with the, the Joko, Joko Combine. Yeah. yeah, so 
Yeah, shout it's out. always interesting the basketball world where you meet people and where you see them again. So now with these two exactly. teams coming to meet each other, two bully type teams coming together. So who this, gets, oh man, which bully gets bullied? Um, I would say that Eastern Wayne will probably end here. I know that's not gonna be a popular choice. Um, I hate. I, I, if I, I, I hate if Wayne, I had, but I might have to. If I had to put a score on it, I'd say. I think Eastern Wayne keeps it a game for a while. I think I'm gonna say eighty six seventy nine. That's that's a fair. I think that's a fair score. Really. Eighty six seventy nine. I think I, I think Southern Durham at home, different beast. Yeah. They are even even in conference play. They win a lot in that gym and for uh, but for coach for coach but Manning for that, it, Eastern Wayne seniors. It's so great that they're here right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm really if, happy if Eastern that. Wayne. The thing that would get them is if Eastern Wayne. If Devin Brown comes to play like a monster. Like he um, has these first couple games because he yeah. had 22 and against New Hanover. Yeah, of course he fought up 12 last night. So, I mean, uh, or did he? No, he, he had 22 last night. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, and he, from what I was told from our friends at Wilmington Star News, uh, Jackson Fuller, yeah. uh, from what he told me, it was Devin Brown on the offensive glass. And the key run was... Tie game, late third quarter, Demetri Wright and Wesley Case get back-to-back -back steals and layups. It was a part yeah. of the 8-0 run. And they, they and see, that's what I talk about with that length. With yeah. Wesley, he's only Demetri is so important. Yeah. I think he has to have another. Wesley's only, he had 19 last Wesley's week. only like 6'1", but his arms are like 6'5". You look at Demetri, he's probably 6'3", 6'4", and his arms are like 6'5", 6'6". Six, 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 six. Yeah. So when you look at that type of limp, it, it's it's a, it's a habit in the passing lanes. So yes, so, yeah. I think that is going to be one of the best matchups of the third round. Really, right. A really sneaky good one. Right. Obviously, let's, there's some other ones, but let's 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 go. Yeah. Where, where, where do you want to go next? Um, let's talk about uh, Kingston. I think because both of those will be pretty quick. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Kingston versus St. Paul. St. Paul, you've had a good run. Kingston will continue to roll on. I will say by the score of this is the, you talk about the boys, correct? Yes. Okay, I think they win by seventy nine fifty five. That's okay. That's, that's a fair score, I think. Seventy nine fifty five. Uh, I think St. Paul's boys have had a really good run as well. Uh, they they have great I, job, but it's time for you to go home. Unfortunately, running into Kinston at home is that's a, that's going to be a tough. That's one. a different for, for a lot of. For a lot of teams, it's tough. I want to just let you know, the only teams that Kinston has lost to is Farmville Central, Moravian Prep, and Combine Academy. That's it. Two <laughs> national programs and one of the best programs. And the defending state. champs. There Goodbye. you go. Defending. Goodbye. And, and see, the only team that's really gotten close to them outside of that has been Goldsboro. And that was at, and that was at But then when they came to go, I mean, It was Goldsboro not close, to, yes. yes. So they, they blew them back out in the water. So everybody who has Kenton has played other than Moravian and Combine, they have blown them out of the water. Everyone but those three, Farmville, yeah. Farmville and Moravian Combine. Yeah. yeah. So Farmville is the only team in the last two years, I think, that's beaten them at home. Yeah. So uh, that says a lot about how big of a home court advantage they have. St. Paul's, great season. Goodbye. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the K might get you. Yeah. Uh, uh, as for the girls playing, the kids and girls are playing. Uh, oh, who are they playing? You want to look that up? Because yeah, I should know this. Yeah, you should. But while you look that up, uh, Farmville Central, both teams are still in it. The boys are going to play Ledford. Ledford beat Southwest Edgecombe in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, they beat Currituck in the second round. Kids will play Croatan. Croatan's had a really good year. Yeah, I they think have. I think they, I think Croatan will give them some trouble, but eventually the Kinston girls will pull away and win. That. Yeah, I, I think that would be pretty easy to see, just when you look at. I don't, it won't be as big as the boys' game though. No, no. Croatan's a really good team. Yeah. Um, but like, I, but like I said, uh, they the Kinston girls are a very senior laden group, just like mm -hmm. the boys are too. But mm -hmm. they have, they are really senior laden. <laughs> I think everyone their starters. I think All their rotation are. players, for the most part, are seniors. I think. Yeah. So they have a lot of experience. They remember what happened last year in regionals. They want to get back and get revenge. Uh, it looks like the collision course for Farmville and Kinston girls could be happening again, the way it's looking. Because of course the Farmville girls are playing East Dublin. 
Another really good team out of East Central 2A, uh, Goldsboro and Spring Creeks Conference, of right. course. Uh, I do think uh, both Farmville teams should win, and if if the Farmville boys against the boys win, we get the rematch Tuesday night at the K, next Tuesday night. So as long as they take care of business tomorrow, that yeah. is going to be one. Of, that is going to be an incredible game once again. Yeah. Uh, so but, so but let's now, we're talking about Farmville Central. He says we're talking about Kenton. Farmville Central boys, Leopard, great job, great season. See you later. Ooh. See you later. I I well I think they could if they gave. If they knock Southwest Edgecombe out, maybe they could get some from some trouble. I, I don't know. Southwest Edgecombe, they had the problem this year of playing down the competition. Well, uh, hate to say, I hate to say it, but... But I mean, at the same time, I also trust Farmville's talent. I mean, they're big fans. I mean, I saw them play Princeton the day after they lost... You talk about Johnny. Southwest Edgecombe. Yeah, Southwest Edgecombe. And the, and the day after they lost um, Jaheim. I mean, honestly, coming in, I mean, the size disadvantage and everything like that. With all of that being said, it should have been a game that was at least 20 to 25 points, in my opinion. And they only were able to win by 10. And they only won by I 10. I thought it was 8. Was it 8? Might have been 8. Might have been 8. Something like that. But still, I, I, I felt like a lot of times Southwest Edgecombe just played down the competition a lot versus Farmville Central. They played their best games against Farmville Central. Um... I don't think there's anything that's stopping Farmville Central from getting back to the state championship game except for Kenston. Maybe. Kenston will have to play a flawless game. Yeah, will have to play a really great the game. Good, the advantage, once again, will be that they are at home. It will be impact. But uh, at the same time, it's not really like that big a road game. For yeah, I was about to say, you could literally play that anywhere. That like, People will show up, for sure. <laughs> I mean, the, the thing about it is you could say that more kids that people are going to pack out there. I don't necessarily know if that's true. I mean, probably, but I don't think so. I, I could be wrong, but I just think that when you look at the how close in proximity they are, you're going to get so many people who I think – are not a Kenston or a Farmville fan. You're gonna get they a lot just of want to they're a basketball fan. They just want to see which, which they're which it's which is good. I mean, yeah. that's, uh, that's I think you're going to get at least a good percentage of just basketball fans, and I think you're going to get enough so you, percentage of farm. So fans. the way you're talking about this potential matchup uh, in the fourth round, the, you the, are you believe this is the two A East regional? Yes. Uh, despite what Goldsboro and, and South Bramble can do, um, and Hertford and uh, Reedsville. These two teams have consistently showed throughout the year that they are the most superior teams. South Bramble, of course, I think they've done a great job, and I think they I have, think they can win it. That's why. I'm, that's well, why I'm, I, I actually I'm on. I mean, but if you put I think South, I mean, but if you put South Bramble at John Wall, I don't know if they're necessarily undefeated. And if you don't, and if you put them at John Wall, I don't necessarily know since they don't go undefeated. I don't think that they get a top. I don't think they get the top seed. I think they would win three seed. I really think that they Farmville got punished for throwing them job. <laughs> I don't think they got, and they're and they're I don't and think they're they not conference. I think I guess no. You don't get punished for John Wall. You get punished for playing Aiden Griffin. Kansas didn't play any Aiden Griffins in, in their non conference. But they played Aiden Griffin in conference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm, still, you're looking at Princeton. I mean, Kenston, who had 22 quality wins over all playoff teams versus. Farmville Central, who had 18 quality wins over playoff teams. That's not that big a difference, in my opinion. It's four, think... it's four wins, though. If you're looking at a computer system, if a system is the one that's controlling it, and you put in 22 quality wins, no bad losses, and you put in 18 quality wins, no bad losses, what do you think the computer is going to pick? Yeah, BCS. Ah, get out of here. Anyway. That's another computer system. It's defunct, yeah. but I mean, anyway, it was. Anyway. Anywho. All I'm going to say about this. Farmville Central versus East Duplin. Girls. That's girls. A matchup. Yeah, I, I believe the East Duplin. I think there's no question who the best team in the 2A East girls is. Yeah, it's Farmville Central easily. When they, uh, they kind of got. Duplin had a great season this year. Done a great job. You won, you, you won the best team from the East Central 2A. I think you actually the best won it. Team. I yes. think you won it. A very good team. 
Goodbye. Have a nice day. Yeah, you you were mean. Ah, no, nah, it's just it's just <laughs> simply how it is. Like I, these games are all gonna be at least by twenty five points. I do believe he's Duke is gonna lose by twenty five. Uh, what's who's kids to play? Who's uh, kids the girls? They're playing. Uh, they're playing what's it called? Croatia. Yeah, bro. that's gonna be at least fifteen points, I believe. Yeah, I agree. Kenson boys, they're gonna win by at least twenty five, and then Fargo's gonna win by at least twenty five. Ah, this is what it is. Like you had great seasons, but. You met Chase. I, you know we These have championship programs. Well, for a reason. You, well, you know we've debated this Farmville Kinston seating thing. Honestly, I I kind of should I kind of should leave it alone, knowing what we've seen in the last couple of years with road teams going in the playoffs. Uh, we, I mean, we and talked. Farmville's the big bad bully. They can go into the bully's house and beat them. And they did already. Why not? Yeah. Why not twice? Right? Exactly. So let's keep it moving. North and North girls. They will be playing St. Paul's undefeated. St. Paul's. St. Paul's undefeated. Now that was a big. Now that was the real big. Uh, that was debate. one of the big upsets because North and North put it on Bertie. That was no, no. I'm talking about the fact that St. Paul's did not get the top seed. Yeah, that's right. They were undefeated. Yeah, there's yeah, there's that too. So. One team got the number one seed going undefeated, and one team that went undefeated did not. Well, that's because St. Paul's schedule, they literally played nobody. They played well, many. They're de- well, they're definitely playing somebody Saturday, because... Yeah. So, if they want to prove that they're somebody... This, if they were ever a time, yeah. Yes. If you want to prove that your seeding was so wrong, be the team from Kenston. Well, from LaGrange. Be the team from the North County. Because you know Lenore County girls basketball is where it's at. Exactly. It North and no. North, like it, like Junior Smith the Third has said on multiple occasions, and like we've said, their starting five can hang with just about everybody. Yeah. And I, I can mean, only imagine North and North had Kinston beat last time they played. That's right. They just they absolutely, and they blew it. Yeah. But this means if they if North and North finds a way to win. We could get Farmville Central North and North around. That, that, would, be that nice. would be an incredible be nice. fourth round game if that happened. That would be nice. But yes, for St. Paul's, if there were ever a time, yeah. to, this would be the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we also got a, I got a shout out North Pitt girls, too. They, uh, they did lose. St. Paul's is the team who beat them. So right. uh, North Pitt did win their first game. I forgot who it was against, but they won their first round matchup. And I shouldn't be surprised by that. Coach Knight and the Panthers always. Their girls basketball team the last few years they've all they're, they're that's a winning program with a winning tradition last five years or so so shout out to the Panthers of course and the Shanti Hines of course bucket getter I hope she gets to play the next level somewhere really nice so all right now of course another Southern Durham team will be heading to Greenville on Saturday as oh, Tommy man. will face number nine Southern Durham that says twenty seven and zero but they're twenty eight and zero twenty eight and zero versus twenty one and six. Southern Durham, of course, you saw him at the, the John Wall. Wall. Yes. So, what do you think? Oh, man, this is an even uh. matchup. Very even. Uh, this is too good for third round, really. Uh, Southern Durham's got some really, really good players. And they beat Kinston at the John Wall. And not only that, they went 3-0. and They also beat Leesville Road, another winning program, and Heritage, two teams that win a lot of basketball games. Yeah, I got Southern Durham in this one. Ooh, okay. I'm with you. I'm with it. I'm with it. I think. I think they're more battle tested. Huh? They're more battle tested. I think. I think Conley playing that game on Thursday against Western Highlands might have helped them figure out what they have to do. So I think they. I think they could. I think that hurt them honestly. When you play those tough contests like that, it can be really a drainer on on your team going into the next game. So I I think that playing that tough of a game is probably draining. I'm a, that I'm was a, probably as hard as they've had to work in a few months. Since the Christmas tournament. I, yes. That is true. But I, I'm going to rock with Conley and Sean Moore. Um, I think, of course you are. Of course I am. Just uh, like a certain other journalist who went with his home teams. Mitchell, come on, dog. You really picked against Marvel Central after you covered them the entire playoff run last year. You really thought that Washington was going to win? Like, really? Like, really, bro? I prefer not to speak on this matter. Yeah. And you really picked Southside over Weldon? 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 Oh, God, 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 God. Well, 
that's one of the best programs in the state. Come on, man. Yeah, leave him alone. It's okay. Hey, you good, Mitchell. I don't know. He's just... Kai's just been... I, I'm for the last couple episodes, this man's just been like... Ah! <laughs> at everybody. Which is not a bad thing, but this, this is all good. All right. So, let's see. The, but I think I got Conley winning by one. Okay. That's my prediction. I got Southern Durham... 76-67. Oh, okay. You tied it, so that's pretty big for you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Last ones left. We haven't talked about Clinton or Goldsboro. Who do you want to talk about? I'll I'll talk about Goldsboro, and you can talk about Clayton. How about that? Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about Goldsboro. The, Golds, the Goldsboro boys uh, knocked off first fight, revenge, getting revenge. For Shout the, out Dylan Blake and, and Jordan Hyman. Great Joe careers, Davidson and Zion Nobles. Those those kids are yeah, they're great good kids. careers for a great coach. Yep, great program. Another twenty one season back to back, I believe. Yeah, shout out to Christian Bullock. He, you know, he was a part of one of those teams. I believe X was a part of that team who also got knocked off as well. Um, he got so, yeah. knocked off by a great performance by Reese Jones that night, nine of eighteen from three. But uh, tonight, or not tonight, last night, uh, they kind of Dylan Blake only hit two. Yeah. Which, honestly, should tell you that he had 17 points or whatever it was uh, with the only scoring two threes. He can score in other ways. Yeah, he's a great It's just scorer. that he's a great three-point shooter. Yeah. Why would he not do that if he's not great at yeah, it? Yeah, I, I, I I've never gotten the, the feel of why people perceive them like it's just a three-point shooter. He, he is first-team running him his offers. That's yeah. first-team. Uh, other than the fact that if you've, never <laughs> seen, if you've never seen him play, then of course you're going to think he's just a shooter. He's not. He's absolutely not just a shooter. He can do a lot. He does a lot. He rebounds. He plays defense uh, at the rim, listen, on, on listen, ball. I, I had a coach tell me after watching their film that Dylan Blake was their best rebounder and their best defender and their best scorer easily. And he he didn't he didn't mention anybody about passing, but I'm pretty sure he was their best passer as well. But nonetheless, so, the borough gets it done. Yeah. On to the third round, which means you know where they're going. They're going to see Greenville. undefeated South, South Greenville. Trap me. Can, can Goldsboro. Trap me. Can Cold. Can, Cold. Trap me. Trap me. Can Goldsboro keep up? Goldsboro can definitely keep up. Uh, it, you know, the, the biggest thing for them is. Being prepared to go back and play play a game after everything they've, that they've been through. Um, the biggest thing, if I'm Goldsboro, I try to feed to Corey Faison, feed him. I want I want the, I want their starters to get in trouble. I want their starters to get in foul trouble. I looked up their stats today. South Bramble, they had five players who scored over 300 points, I believe it is, but they don't have anybody else who scored over 50 after that. So. Goldsboro, you depth. have depth. You they see. don't have depth. You have depth that can score, as you have five players who scored 99 points or more. And more uh, more throughout that, of course, is, is have scored. So That is going to be a tough five to go against. Bobby Fe Pettiford, who just got offered by Virginia Tech, another ACC offer for him. If, if Bobby Pettiford, if you can get Bobby Pettiford in foul trouble, then I think that Goldsboro wins easily. Hmm. Like I said, I, I think the biggest thing between them is that Bobby Pettiford is going to be the best player on the floor, without a doubt. For the most part, you know, maybe X has a great night and he looks like. I the think best player that, on the floor. that I think that I think happen. it comes down to X. That could happen. I actually believe if X has a big game, they have a shot at this. I think. I think between him, Xavier has to have a huge. I think between game. him, Christian, and Corey, they have to score seventy-five. That's a that's a good number. I, I probably so I need a thirty good. ball from X. Yes, yes. I need twenty from from Takori, and I need twenty from Christian Bullock. I need that, that's I need seventy, 70. but around around that is I still need, good. I, I need all three of them to have a big night. I they need, need Jakir Fowler to give me three threes. Jakir Fowler to give me three threes. Darius Rogers, couple layoffs. Darius three. Rogers, a couple of layoffs. Jackies, Jackies, give defense, me give you know? me three or four layups. In transition, because this is going to be the type of game where you are going to have to outscore, run, 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 run. That's what South Granville does. Watching film, Kobe them, Jones, yeah, Makai Jones, yeah, Keith Allen, yeah, Bobby Pettiford. They're a good team, and they're a senior laden group. Yeah, 
They they remember all those last, guys. Except they Bobby remember last Jesus year when they, when they played Green Central and, and Amaji Don had seventeen blocks. It felt like more. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Amaji and Shaquem. Yeah. Like, yeah. Those are guys. So um, for Goldsboro, the biggest key is: can you get seventy plus from your big three, and then can you get about another twenty to thirty from the rest of your guys? They're gonna have to score at least eighty-five to ninety points to win this. I, I believe. I believe the key number for them is ninety. And hold and 90. hold South Granville under what? Hold South Granville under eighty-five. Okay. If you can hold South Granville to what they average, and then you have an above average night, you, you're you're in there. You're in there. Now, of course, you could slow it down. Try not to play at their pace. I mean, because Goldsboro has been a lot slower of a team this year. They have not went as fast as they have in recent years. In recent years, they would just run up and down the floor, and the defense, I don't think, was as committed as it is now. Um, so, I mean, they could go one of two ways. You could try to say, let's slow it down and play against what they want to do. But trying to slow a team like that down is going to be a hard. team that is very hard to slow down. That I not and if you can play with them at their pace, and Goldsboro can play with them at their pace, you play with them at their pace and and try to hope that you can have a better night than they have. Use a lot. You have fifteen players on that bench. Use twelve of them at least. And that's what Krim does. He does yeah. use a lot of his guys. Right. He will. He will use a lot. He will. He will. Yeah. He will take them in. If they, go, get good, will, if they can get good minutes from everybody, because I looked at the box score from last night, and they got everybody was hitting their shots, and it looks good. I mean, so, hey, it's, it's going to be attractive. I'm, it's going to be fun times. You, you, you're going to enjoy a really good game out there, yeah. I think. Um, um, last game to talk about, we got to get this done. We got to talk about both, both Clayton teams quickly. We'll start with the girls. They uh, ran into Bria Griffith. Bria Griffith and uh, Monty Smith. Both of those girls at Hunt are tough. Uh, they are true covering, warriors. Covering them, man, they, 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 they yeah. Yeah, they, they were fun to watch. Bria, the length, the athleticism that she has. I mean, she has a D1-type body. It's just all about. Seeing her against Green Central, I, like, that was the first time I saw her play. I was like, wow. She yeah. Was, she yeah, the game comes really easy to her. It's one of those things where if you can get her the right coach and put, get her really working, Tough. But uh, unfortunately, Bonnie, for the great race, shooter, you know, um, great okay. scorer. But, you know, for Clayton, they, they yeah. lose, was I think, 62 to 39. Yeah, Something unfortunately, like for the Lady Comets, it comes to an end for them. But, you know, girls basketball, a lot of that depends on your guard play. And uh, Dariana Howard, she's great. She's a forward, though. She's learning to be a guard, but she's a forward. And right now, until they can find some guards that can. Uh, play with that level of guards, then I think it's going to be a little while before you're looking at a state championship level contender type team for the club. But the, the future is very bright. If, yeah. if, if that young lady is going to be oh, a oh, if, if you add, If you ask every coach in the state, do you want a Dariana Howard for the next three years? You they, take, they will all say yes. You take, you take a young lady who gives you 15 and 8 every night, every single night. Right? And she's what, 6 one, two, yeah. as a freshman? <laughs> But she, yeah, she's she's a ridiculous player, and she's going to be in heavy consideration for player of the year. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be now. Now the girls we'll have that when the time comes. But yeah, of course, her Anna Taylor, Anna Taylor, of course, Brunson, all Anna players. had a tough game. New Charlotte had a tough oh game. Oh my goodness! Oh. Sixty-five to fifteen. Uh, let's not talk about it anymore. Um, I really, I'm. I'm I feel bad. I feel. Yeah. I do feel bad for New Charlotte. They had a great year. But yeah, they did. I, they will. They are going. They're going to be another, another team that's future is bright. Just yeah. Instead of Anna Taylor, Jordan Harris, twenty points a game. Lefty shooter. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the Clayton boys had a challenge, but they passed. Yeah, uh, beat Northern Nash, I believe, fifty-two to forty-nine. Yep, absolutely. Northern Nash, I believe they played them earlier this year as well. They did in the Christmas tournament. Beat them that time as well. So they were able to beat the team who they had already beaten. That was a uh, that was a good t- test pass for them. And now it comes the big one. Yeah. Against Caden Dawkins and Easton Gilbert right. after what they did to Sal Johnston. I think Clayton will handle it. Hmm. I think. I Clayton, think you know what? I didn't even realize that Caden Dawkins was five nine. He is. 
He's one of Clayton the most great players in the state. A lot of the size, a lot of different yes, sides that they can they throw, throw at him. They have a lot of different defenders, really good defenders who get, who they can put on. They're them. probably they can probably start with Justin Bell, then go to Shakir Shakir Howard. Yeah, Justin Bell, Shakir Howard, Jaquan. Uh, you could throw Mason at him on occasion, but you know the thing about that is you don't want Mason to get in foul trouble. So not too many possessions. But Caden has gone against size most of the year. Yeah, yeah, he has, he and has, he has. is he's passed just about every test. Like, yeah, kid is just. I don't think you're gonna, I don't think you're going to stop him, but if you can hold him under twenty five or at twenty five, I think that will give you. Yes, I agree with that. Um, but I mean, when you look at it, he had forty points, and the rest of the team had thirty seven. So, um, but good, but a good guard play trumps all, in my opinion. I think good guard play. It does, is but it's true. not like Clayton has slouches out there. No, they don't. Mason, the all those kids are great. Mason yeah. just got off from William Beach today. Of course. Yeah, of course it's not Caden Dawkins who I think he, who did he? I mean, he had an offer from somebody the other day too. Uh, oh, I forgot. If if he did, I forgot. And I, I bet Kevin Dawkins would be mad at me that I forgot. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Child Kev. yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, Mason Rush, you know. I think the he's going to be crucial for this. Can he come out and have a big game? Uh, they, BJ, they, I know what BJ going to do. Uh, I think if Ross can come out and hit a, stay hot for three because yeah. he's been shooting the lights out the last couple yeah. of games. I, I mean, all things being equal, I take Clayton just because of I know that they have two bona fide scorers and two bona fide killers um, versus Eastern Governor, who has that one. I don't I, – do you think there's more? Do you think there's more? You know more about Easton Gilford than I do. Well, I think Caden Dawkins can trump all. I really do. I mean, but B- in the B- end, in the end, I will still take Clayton, but it will not be by much. Okay, I don't think it'll be by much either. I got Clayton winning. I'm gonna say 85-79. Actually, I think it would be better if Clayton won the way they did against North Nash. I think that'd be better. For See, them. but I think they won like that because that's the way Northern Nash plays. They play a lot like South Johnson. And, they play slow too. Yeah. Time doesn't like that. Yeah, and I think Eastern Guilford wants to push the pace a little bit. And I yeah, think, they do. And I think Clayton is more prepared to put, push the pace. I think they're more built to push the pace because Justin Bell is a lot better in the open court. Shakir Howard is a lot better in the open court. Uh, Jaquan Ross is more of a half court player, I will say. Uh, Mason. Is a, Mason can do both. I yeah, think. Mason's really good in both. BJ is of course, and he's great in half court, but in open court, he's unstoppable. He, he's, he's I, when it comes to the open court, I would put BJ up against just about any player in this state. Honestly, man, I, we have some tough choices. So we're, we're, you're going to goals first. I yeah, I'm going to goals. I have a tough choice for my second game because. He's going to Kyle, but we don't know where else he's going to go. So. I was going to say, Princeton on Edgecombe would be great. Clay- Actually, going to Clayton would be really cool, too. Yeah. Um, but realistically, obviously, just to just to end it right quick, uh, we got some great rematches this Saturday. We got Millbrook and Leesville round four. Yeah. Again, Leesville won the last two, one in overtime, one to break the tiebreaker. Uh, Carter Witt heard you. Uh, <laughs> I'm just messing. Uh, but Mil- I think Millbrook's got a shot at this one. I really think, like, when you – when it, you know how hard it is to beat a team three times. Yeah. Something just tells me. Give me Millbrook. I'll take Millbrook. Eat the, feed the post. Feed the big man. Feed Will feed Thug. your Feed your favorite player, Will Thug. Yeah. Who's your favorite player? Yeah. Feed, feed the, the last post superhero. The last post superhero. I love that the nickname most, for him. The last post superhero, Will Thug. I like, but I like Jake the Snake too. I like, I like, I, I like him too. But hey, that big man is where basketball is won inside in the post. I think they'll also need Vander Heiden and Sam Hood. Jalen McCoy's played great in their last game against Panther Creek. Thirty yeah. points, just got a first offer too. Yeah, so congratulations to him. Congratulations very, very to him. deserved for that. Yeah. So, uh, but Fee Will Felton, you win the ball game for All Leesville. Going on Leesville here. for against Leesville. Uh, just don't let Jake the Snake slither. Don't let him slither. Right. I tell you. Of course, there's also Edenton versus uh, Plymouth. Home, I mean, versus Plymouth. Holmes to County. Yep. You think Edenton is going to win the 1A East, so yeah. you're going to stick with that. Yeah. I'm going to go with Washington County by one. Something – I honestly – you wouldn't be mad hey, here. I'm going to say you've been to Washington County a lot, so you've probably seen I have. more than I have. I have. Just I, 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 I feel like – I just like – I like, I just like, I like, I like Edenton. You know, I think last year was uh, Holmes' year. I mean, last year was a year for Washington to go and 
them losing twice already. Man, you know, I give it a, I give it a put. I'm gonna give it to Eaton. It is at it is at a neutral site at Columbia <laughs> High, so right. that could bode well actually for both teams. teams yeah. I think. No, no, it's gonna be a much better environment. It's gonna be loud. See, it's gonna lot, be I think I'm glad that they found Columbia was a perfect place for that game. I think. Yep, 1600. So it's loud, loud 1600. Um, oh, and one of these, I'm telling you, you know how much I love how the 252 fans travel everywhere. Yeah. They come, they're coming, they come as a family. Right. I'm telling you. Right. Um, let's see, other rematches we want to talk about? Any other that we want to talk about real quickly? Uh, I can sneak in uh, Smith versus Mount Tabor again. That's going to be a pretty good one in the 3 OS. Uh, yeah. Mount Tabor's played really good ball. I'm not sure. I'm not, this one. I, you know, I said it's hard to beat a team three times, but I actually could see Mount Tabor doing it again. I hate saying it because well, those. I hope this. I hope, I hope the Smith kids are not watching. <laughs> well, <laughs> but nonetheless, it has a show, man. But nonetheless, third round of the playoffs starts tomorrow. Kai will be at Goldsboro versus South Granville. So all the all the unless Avio Smoker changes his mind and we go to Eastern Wayne Southern Nerd, but. I'll be riding with the smoker man. Uh, I, he is I ran a triathlon once. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, we haven't had guests on the show in a while, but I think it's I think it's good that we got a few in where it's just us, so you know who we are, and I think we've we've uh, we've really kind of what are you doing? <laughs> um, um, let, let's 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 get out of here. I gotta go. Home. WJG Sports Classics March fifteenth. Yeah. That, 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 I think that's the only plug. Yeah, I think that's the really only thing we're going to talk about, of course. Uh, yeah, so just follow us on all social media platforms. You know normally where to find us. And, yeah, thank you. We'll see you all later.